This is CIUT 89.5 FM, the University of Toronto Community Radio Station. Available across Canada on Star Choice National Satellite Service, Channel 826. And broadcasting worldwide at www.ciut.fm. Welcome back to Take 5. It is 8.32 a.m. I'm Martin Waldman in studio this morning with Damon Sheffer. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, homeopathy, or psychics, you've probably thought, well, what's the harm in believing in those things anyway? The website whatstheharm.net has an answer for you. 300, over 350,000 people killed, over 300,000 people injured, and close to $3 million in economic damages. That's the cost of site founder Tim Farley says is a result of failing to think critically about the information you come across in your daily life. Tim Farley joins us this morning to talk about his site and the skeptical movement. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, can we start off by, t- uh, maybe you can give us a brief description of uh, the aim of, of your site and why you decided to start up this site. Uh, well, like you said, a lot of people uh, believe in various things like astrology and homeopathy and whatnot, and, and they often make that argument, what's the harm, you know? Uh, it, it make the argument, for instance, against homeopathy that it's just water. Um, they say, well, what's the harm? I'm just drinking water. You don't believe in it, but I do. Uh, but, but actually, there are quite a number of cases where people have relied on things like this rather than uh, going to their doctor or relied on advice they've gotten from psychics or astrologers and uh, really come to great uh, economic or uh, personal harm. And so basically, I, I thought these stories were interesting and uh, illustrative of, of something, and so I thought I'd collect them on a website. So it's an interesting idea to sort of collect them and, and find an, an economic, uh, you know, effect that it's had. How did you sort of go about calculating calculating the uh, the economic yeah, impact? The, yeah, it's kind of it's very difficult because a lot of times you find that um, you, there are lawsuits involved that are settled out of court, and so the dollar figure isn't there. And and how do you put a price on a human life where someone has died? So uh, to a large degree, the, the economic damages is kind of a ballpark figure sort of thing, uh, based on what is in the article uh, that I am linking to. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a guess, really. Um, and I really feel like, just from the experience I've had researching these, that there are a lot more stories that you don't hear about. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm limited to things that I can uh, document with a, with a news story or a scientific paper or something that's documentable, not, uh, you know, just an anecdote that somebody tells over coffee. And um, I think a lot of these things happen and never make it into the paper because if no one, if no one gets sued or if no one uh, gets accused of criminal wrongdoing, uh, there's no reason for it to make it into the paper. Can we, uh, maybe we'll dig into uh, a few examples from your, your site. Uh, can you give us an example of, say, uh, uh, someone who's, who's been harmed by uh, alternative medicine or, 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 or going to a psychic? Uh, what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, examples do you have on, on your site? Yeah, well, there was, a, there was a quite prominent, actually, there's a quite prominent case in Australia right now uh, of a woman who decided to treat her uh, colon cancer uh, with homeopathy, and her husband was actually a homeopath uh, who, according to some accounts, was going to write a book about uh, uh, treating his wife's uh, cancer with homeopathy. And uh, it's alleged that he, he insisted that she not use conventional medicine. And her cancer progressed to the point where she had a, a, a bowel obstruction and she was in great, great pain and had to have emergency surgery. Um, and uh, by that point, the cancer had progressed to a point where, uh, you know, conventional medicine could do nothing for her, and she died. And now there's an inquest uh, uh, brought on by her family to, you know, whether or not uh, her, her husband acted improperly during that. But there have been other cases like that where people relied on homeopaths or naturopaths or somebody to give them good advice and uh, ended up dying of something that could have been treated with a simple antibiotic or you know, a very simple uh, conventional medical procedure. So what is it about, well, that, that's obviously a, a sad example of it, but what is it for you about people not thinking critically that, that sparked you to want to make a website about it? 
Well, I think I always think of it as, uh, you know, people ask, this is all part of what is known as the skeptic movement. People always ask, well, what is a skeptic? Do you just not believe in things? But I always, I always pitch it this way. I always say that what we're trying to do is um, work in the intersection between science education and consumer protection. So we're trying to, to educate people as to the science, like whether or not uh, homeopathy works or whether or not there's any evidence that, that anyone has psychic power, um, and, and use that to give people advice that they can use in their daily lives. You know, don't, don't see that psychic or don't buy that book that, that has bad advice for you. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, give them advice that they can use uh, practically. Some of some of the dangers of of, of uh, obviously not seeking proper medical attention will probably seem fairly obvious to people. Maybe some of the not so obvious uh, 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 paranormal beliefs that that could be harmful. Say someone wants to believe in ghosts or, or go see a psychic. Uh, someone might say, "Well, you know, what's the possible harm harm in that?" Yeah, well, I've got a number of cases where people have uh, who believed in ghosts went off. There's there's this trend now because of various TV shows of people wanting to do ghost hunting. And people have done uh, kind of ill-advised things trying to do ghost hunting and gotten themselves hurt in abandoned buildings or arrested for trespassing and that sort of thing. I, I think uh, one, of, one of the more interesting stories that I always cite on the site is a, uh, or when people ask me about stories on the site, is a story about feng shui, which is the uh, uh, belief that uh, arranging your environment can affect the, the flow of your life and the flow of ki through your, through your house. Whatnot. And I have a case about feng shui from uh, uh, Malaysia where there were two families uh, that didn't get along and lived across the street from each other, but they both believed in feng shui and they both practiced it. And it turns out that in feng shui there's a, uh, one practice where you put a mirror on the outside of your house and uh, it reflects bad luck away from your family. And both of these families had done this such that the two mirrors were reflecting bad luck at each other's houses. And it seems quite silly, but uh, they believed it. And it escalated into a feud between the two families, uh, and someone ended up getting stabbed to death uh, over a silly feud wow. over uh, an ancient belief that, you know... And you also... Um, I, 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 in reality. I, uh, I heard you in a recent interview talk about how uh, a couple of Chinese uh, uh, skeptics who were real estate agents uh, managed to profit on someone else's belief uh, in, in, in ghosts. Could you tell that story? Yeah, that's a great story. I love that story. Uh, there were some superstitious folks who believed that this building was haunted, and they had, uh, I think it was like an apartment building or something like that, small apartment building, and no one wanted to rent it because everyone believed there were ghosts in it. And these fellows were skeptical of that. They didn't believe in ghosts. So they went into the building, and uh, the, the building had been on the market for some years, and the price had gone down and down. And uh, they decided to buy it and investigate it, and they realized that what, what people were claiming were ghosts were actually banging noises that they could localize to the plumbing in, in the house. And when they had a plumber come in and open up the pipe, it turned out that somehow uh, a catfish, several catfish, had gotten into the uh, sewer pipes in the building and were swimming back and forth in the sewer pipes and banging as they, as they banged around through the, the bends of the pipe. And the superstitious people who believed there, lived there, believed that those were ghosts. And uh, so they got the fish out of the sewer system, and they renovated the building, and they, and they profited quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm curious to, to know, is has this kind of caught on? What's the response been to your website? Are there people that really feel passionate about critical thinking and just and the skeptics movement? Yeah, there's, uh, there's quite uh, a lot of uh, folks that are very interested in, especially in the last few years as uh, the social media and Internet thing has taken, off, has taken off, you know, Twitter and Facebook and that sort of stuff, and people have been able to find each other online. Uh, the skeptic movement has really uh, taken off. In fact, uh, just next week there's the big uh, uh, amazing meeting in, in Las Vegas. Everybody's getting re ready to fly out to Vegas, and there's going to be about 1,200 skeptics. Uh, in a hotel there, uh, all talking about these types of things and figuring out better ways that we can educate the public about science and uh, and and teach people, uh, you know, which of these things are scams and which of these things aren't and stuff like that. 
Well, Tim, uh, it's a very interesting talk. Uh, it's an interesting website. I encourage everyone to check it out, What's the harm.net. We've linked your site to our website, www.ciut.fm. Tim Farley is, of course, the creator of What's the harm.net, and he joins us live this morning on the phone. Thank you very much for talking to us this morning, Tim. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. It is 845 here on CIUT 89.5 FM.